derivatives, product quotient, and all trigonometry. This is a homework assignment. So in this homework assignment, we're going to be working out problems two, four, and six, and proceeding to problem number two. We have find dy dx if y equals the product of tangent x and secant x. We say this is a product because these two are functions. Tangent x is a function and secant x. And so the product of these two functions we call the product rule. And to summarize what the product rule is, I'm going to just write down here product rule. And that is that if you have the product of two functions, we'll call this ddx, and we'll call these two functions uh, u and v. The product of the derivative of the product of two functions is that first function, in this case u, times the derivative of that second function, which we call v, plus that second function, which is v times the derivative of that first function, which is u. And so applying the product rule, <clears throat> let's identify what u and v are. So we'll call u tangent x. We'll call v secant x. So on the right here, we'll say u is equal to uh, tan x. And u prime is equal to secant squared x. Uh, one of our students, Malik, had a Nicki Minaj related mnemonic, uh, not, yeah, kind of a device to help remember things, so a little bit of humor in the classroom. Next, uh, v is going to be secant x, and v prime is going to be equal to secant x tangent x. Okay, how do we come up with these things here? Well, to help remember what the derivative of tangent is or secant is, we can write these things here below. If we write these three products, factors in order, tan x, secant x, secant x, with this written down, we cross out whatever we are trying to take the derivative of. So if we take the derivative of tangent x, we cross out tangent, and we have remaining secant x times secant x, which is secant squared x. And also, if we want to say in the case of v, which is secant x, we want to take the derivative of secant x, we cross out secant x, and what we have remaining, we have the product of tangent x secant x. So we just to help remember. So let's go ahead and work this out. Um, we're going to say dy dx is equal to the u, and u in this case is tangent x, times the derivative of v, and v prime is going to be secant x tangent x plus v u prime and v is secant x and u prime is secant squared x so times secant squared x so that's all this worked out and just kind of simplifying we have dy dx is equal to uh, just kind of combining things here. We're going to have secant secant x times tangent. We have two tangent x's here, so we have tangent squared x plus we have secant x times secant squared x. This would be secant cubed x. And we have a common factor between these two of secant x, so dy dx is equal to Uh, secant x times quantity tangent squared x plus secant squared x. 
And when you have these squared things, you might be able to simplify using trigonometric identities, uh, Pythagorean identities. In this case, we might be well enough right here. I just happen to remember uh, that the, uh, the Pythagorean identity tangent squared theta, I'm writing this below here to the right, plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And so if we subtract 1 from both of these, we have cancellation here, tangent squared theta. Tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. Well, so happens we can write everything up here in terms of secant squared theta by replacing this tangent squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1. So dy dx equals secant x times quantity uh, secant squared x minus 1. And this is just what I've written so far, the replacement of tangent squared x plus secant squared x. And then if we just combine things here, we have dy dx is equal to uh, we have secant x times, what is that, uh, 2 secant squared x minus 1. If we wanted to, we could distribute this again and get secant 2 secant cubed x minus secant x. But anyway, we'll just leave it like this. And uh, if, you, if you look at multiple choice problems, like on an AP test, it might be looking for this kind of simplified version. But if you just came this far and got this up here, I've just asterisked. That would probably be sufficient. Okay, let's go on to problem four. We have find dr d theta if r equals secant theta over 1 plus cosine theta. And for this one, we have a quotient of two functions. So we're going to uh, write out what we call the quotient rule. All right, quotient rule is that if we have, if we want to find the derivative, oops, the derivative ddx of a, let's say, a high function divided by a low function, that is going to be equal to, let me go ahead and put all this in parentheses to make things really clear. That's going to be equal to low times the derivative of the high, I'm just going to write that as high prime, minus high times the derivative of the low, I'm going to write as low prime, all over low squared. And I had a little song saying, loady, 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 high, minus high, de, high, de, low, all over low squared. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what we need to remember. And let's go ahead and uh, articulate what these things are. Well, the low is going to be uh, 1 plus cosine theta. That's just the denominator up here. The d low, which is going to be the derivative of the low, is we could call low prime, is going to be negative sine theta. Your high is going to be equal to a secant theta. And your d high, or high prime, is going to be equal to, uh, the, what's the derivative of secant theta? We worked that out here in problem two. See that? It's going to be tangent theta, secant theta. So I'm going to write this as tangent theta, secant theta. OK, and so uh, now working this all out, I'm going to kind of work a little left to do in the room. Uh, we're going to say dr d theta is equal to, let me move it up a little more. I think I'm going to dr d theta 
it could be an issue of room by the time we get to the bottom of this. We have low, and what is low? Low is going to be uh, 1 plus cosine theta, and what I've done is I've wrapped that 1 plus cosine theta, which I'll call quantity 1 plus cosine theta, in parentheses, because we're going to have to distribute to the derivative of the hive, which is going to be tan x, or tan theta rather, secant theta. Okay. And it's going to be minus the high. And what is the high? The high is secant theta. And our d low is going to be negative sine theta. And we have that all over low, which is 1 plus cosine theta. cosine theta squared. Okay. And distributing out. I can write drd theta is going to be equal 1 times tangent theta secant theta. So we're going to say that's going to be tangent theta secant theta and we have this, that's going to be 1 times this, and then cosine theta times tangent theta, secant theta, that's going to be plus cosine theta times tangent theta, secant theta. And then we're going to have this last term here, we're going to have a negative times a negative, which is positive, so we're going to have plus secant theta sine theta and all that over all over all over low squared okay this we got low squared right cosine theta squared all right next um, <clears throat> we look for a common factor we got we got three terms here and you might be tempted to use tangent here, but it looks like secant is your common factor between these three terms. So we're going to factor out secant theta. So dr d theta is equal to, okay, we have secant theta times, we're going to have tangent theta, cosine theta, right? Is that right? Yeah. Well, no, we're just going to have tangent, just tangent theta, right? Secant theta times tangent theta. From the second one, we're going to have plus, we factor it out of secant theta, we're going to have cosine theta as tangent theta, right? And then this last one, we factor out of secant theta, we're going to have just sine theta. Wrap that in parentheses, put our denominator, our low squared, 1, 1 plus cosine theta squared. All right. This middle term here, cosine theta uh, tan theta, let's just, I'm going to write this to the right here. Cosine theta uh, times tangent theta. Well, that's going to be equal to cosine theta times tangent theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So we have a cancellation of cosine theta over cosine theta. We have remaining sine theta. So we can replace this middle term with just sine theta. Come back up here, we have drd theta. Equals to is equal to secant 
secant theta times tangent theta. And the second term here we're replacing with sine theta. And plus sine theta. And again, we have this all over quantity 1 plus cosine theta squared. One plus quantity one cosine theta squared. And let's see, dr d theta is equal to secant theta times uh, quantity tangent theta plus two sine theta. A lower quantity one plus cosine theta squared and we've simplified some but if if you realize that you can just put in if you have like pi or uh, pi over 2 or pi over 3 pi over 6 all these things are going to simplify out let me see in the left here. I didn't get this as secant theta. They're going to simplify out pretty well if we have a derivative point. So this will be the most simplified version that I was able to readily come up with. And if you ended up short of that up here someplace, that's probably okay. But anyway, let's go on to uh, Number six, number six, we have let y equals one half quantity x to 12th power plus 17. And if we look at this function, this quantity x to 12th power plus 17 is to the first power, which means that we can distribute the one half to each term inside parentheses. So rewriting, we can write this as y equals. Uh, one half x to the twelfth power is one half times that first term x to the twelfth plus one half times seventeen, which simplifies to seventeen over two. I guess that's going to be eight point five. If we take y prime or dy dx, uh, that's going to be equal to uh, using power rule twelve. That's this exponent up here times one half x to the 12 minus 1 power, which is 11, and this uh, constant, 17 over 2, is going to be 0 once we take the derivative of this. And so, uh, and now just simplifying, we come here, dy dx is equal to 12 over 2, which is 6. And we're going to have x to the 11th power. So that's really going to be it. x to the 11th power. Uh, another thing you might be tempted to look at is the product rule because this, uh, or excuse me, the chain rule, because we have this x to the 12th power plus 17 inside parentheses. So just kind of, uh, we can rewrite this as. Uh, y equals uh, one half. We'll have x to the twelfth power plus seventeen, and this quantity here would be to what power? The first power. And using the chain rule, I'm going to just put y, say y prime instead of dy dx. We take one times. That's the power of this thing in parentheses here, times one half, and we're going to have x to the twelfth power, only x to the twelfth power plus 17 to the zero power, and times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 12 x to the eleventh power. And what we have is this thing right here, only x to the twelfth 
plus 17 to the zero power, that's going to become anything to the zero power is one. That goes to one. So uh, y prime is equal to one half. One times one half is one half. And this whole thing here is one, right? And I'm circling red times 12 x to the 11th power. And if we have one half of 12 is six. So again, using this chain rule method, we again get our answer, our first derivative as six x to the 11th power. Anyway, let's see the problems worked out. Hope, hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, good luck, and I thank you for viewing.